welcome students to today's session in today's session we will study the relationship between inertia and mass after completing the analysis of newton's first law of motion we shall be moving into newton's second law of motion now let us understand how mass and inertia are related a body at rest continues to be at rest and body in motion continues to be in motion this property is called as inertia inertia of a body is measured by the magnitude of force requ required to change the state of the body the force required to change the state of a heavier body is more than the force required to change the state of a lighter body this we experience in our daily life this is because the mass of heavier body is more than the mass of the lighter body so it is understood that the measure of inertia is directly proportional to the mass of the body hence we can retell this as the mass of the body is a measure of its inertia let us now understand what is momentum of a body momentum of the body is defined as the product of mass and velocity momentum is written as mass into velocity which can be written in abbreviated letters t is equal to momentum is represented by p t is equal to m into v where p is momentum of a body m is mass of the body and v is velocity of the body if a body is at rest its velocity is zero so its momentum is also zero because p is equal to m into v the si unit of momentum is kilogram meter per second it can be written as kg m bar s or kg m s inverse a truck moving at a very low speed can kill a person standing in its path because of the heavy mass of the truck at the same time a bullet which is having a very small mass can also kill a person if it is fired with a large velocity so the impact on the body depends on mass and velocity in other words momentum on an object depends on its mass and velocity now let us analyze newton's second law of motion newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the applied force in the direction of force the laws are to be stated as it is stated we cannot change the words of the laws so learn it as such i will repeat newton's second law the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the applied force in the direction of force now we shall derive a mathematical expression of newton's second law of motion let us consider an object of mass m moving along a straight line with an initial velocity of u and is accelerated to a final velocity v in time t by applying a force f then our initial momentum p1 is m into u and our final momentum p2 is m into v now change in momentum t2 minus p1 is written as m into v minus m into u we can take the common m outside and the change in momentum can be written as m into brackets v minus u now if we are going to consider the rate of change of momentum then it becomes m into v minus u by t or the applied force f is proportional to m into v minus t if we remove the proportionality sign it can be rewritten as f is equal to k into m into v minus u by t but we already know that v minus u 
by t is equal to a. So we can rewrite the equation as f is equal to k into m into a where k is the constant of proportionality which you can equate it to 1. So f is equal to m into a otherwise force is equal to mass into acceleration. So, this is our Newton's second law. The rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the applied force in the direction of force. F is equal to mass into acceleration. The SI unit of this quantity is uh, SI unit of mass is kg and acceleration we already know is meter per second square or ms minus 2. So, unit of force is kg meter per second square or it is given a new term, Newton, with a symbol M. So, this expression, mathematical expression for second law is very important. You have to learn it, writing it down to derive at the equation F is equal to mass into acceleration. Now, let us look at to some of the applications of Newton's second law of motion. A cricket player fielder especially, moves his hand backwards on catching a fast moving cricket ball. Why is this? Automatically the hands of the cricketer moves backwards to keep the ball held in the hand. You can have a look at the picture. The ball is held and the cricketer moves his hand backward. Why does he do so? A fast moving cricket ball has large momentum. On stopping the cricket ball, its momentum has suddenly been reduced to zero. When a player moves his hand back, the time taken to stop the ball is increased and hence the rate of change of momentum decreases. Otherwise, it will hurt the hand of the cricketer if he does not move his hand backwards to hold the catch. So, this is a very important concept. You can... Uh, have many examples of this uh, uh, application of second law of momentum. Some more are there. Uh, we can have some more examples of this uh, second law of motion. In a high jumping event the uh, or the long jumping event, the athlete is provided with a cushion or a heap of sand on the ground onto which he falls. Now this cushion or sand helps to increase the time in which the momentum comes to zero. That is the athlete, athlete goes down into the sand increasing the time and this decreasing the rate of momentum. Hence the force on the athlete is reduced and the athlete does not get hurt. Packaging materials like thermocol or sheets or bubble sheets or straw paper etc. are used while packing glassware, china dish, electronic devices etc. These materials help to increase the time in which the momentum becomes zero. When there is a jerking or jolting taking place, this increases the rate of change of momentum and hence the force is decreased and the articles do not get broken. So, there are many, many more examples so which will reduce momentum on the object uh, leading to less injury to the object or person who is involved in movement. So, this is about the second law of motion. Uh, we will look into some, into some of the problems. Let us look into one of the examples. A motor car is moving with a velocity of 108 kilometers per hour. And it takes 4 seconds to stop after the brakes are applied. Calculate the force exerted by the brakes on the motor car if its mass along with the passengers is 1000 kilograms. Now let us first convert this uh, value for uh, velocity is given in 108 kilometers per hour. So uh, we will convert uh, it into meter per second first. So let us look into the conversion. Um, the initial velocity of the motor car u is equal to 108 kilometers per hour. So, conversion to meter per second is into 1000 divided by 60 into 60. 
that makes it 30 meter per second. Now the final velocity is zero because the car has applied a brake and it is coming to a stop. Now let us uh, substitute the values that we have into our equation. The total mass of the motor car along with the passengers is 1000 kg and the time taken for the motor car to come to a stop is 4 seconds after application of the brake. Let us calculate the magnitude of force that is required to make the car halt. We will make use of our equation f is equal to into v minus u by t. Substituting the values we get f is equal to 1000 into 0 which is final velocity minus 30 divided by 4 which is equal to 7500 kg meter per second square. Now this value is to be put with a negative sign because this is deceleration. Okay that is the uh, brakes are applied and the force acts in a negative direction uh, making the motor car to come to a stop. So this is a force which is applied in the negative direction that accounts for the negative sign that is put in between in front of 7500 km per second square or you can rewrite it as minus 7500 newton. So the negative sign tells that force is exerted by the brakes in the opposite direction of motion of the motor car making it to come to a stop. So we will move on to the next problem. This problem is a constant force acts on an object of mass 5 kg for a duration of 2 seconds. This increases the object's velocity from 3 meter per second to 7 meter per second. That is initial velocity and final velocity. Find the magnitude of applied force. Now if the force was applied for a duration of 5 seconds, what would be the final velocity of the object? Now, whenever problems are given, it should be our concern that we first down write, write down all the data that is available in the problem. This will help us to find out or derive at what formula we are going to use in the problem. So, we will first write down what and all data is available in the problem. Here, u is equal to, that is initial velocity is equal to 3 meter per second. Final velocity v is equal to 7 meter per second. Time is 2 seconds and mass is 5 kg. So, with this data, we should think of which formula we are going to apply. So, from our equation, f is equal to m into v minus u by t. We can find out the value of f. Substituting the values in this relation, f is equal to 5 kg into 7 meter per second minus 3 meter per second that is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by 2 which is equal to 10 newton. Now that is the force that is applied. Now if the force apply, is applied for 5 seconds instead of 2 seconds then what is going to be the final velocity of the object? Now we will rewrite the same equation with uh, finding out the value of V. After, if we rewrite the equation, we get the equation as V is equal to U plus F into T divided by M. Now we will substitute all the values that are available with us in this equation for U, F and M and then we get the final velocity as V is equal to 13 meter per second. So, uh, solution of problems in physics is very interesting. Uh, we have, we can... Uh, if we are thorough with the concept and all the equations, we can uh, write, we have many methods of solution to the same question, same problem. So, uh, unless we practice doing this, um, it will be difficult for us to solve the uh, problems, uh, finding of the equations, etc. So, it is my advice that all of you will uh, find out more questions and then uh, try to solve it yourselves. Uh, you will find it very interesting. So thank you for listening to today's session. 
bye for today